Here's what it's like to stand on top of a Hong Kong high-rise for a selfie. Millions have watched daredevils like these, many from Russia, on YouTube and other social media. There's the famous Russian on the roofs duo, seen here climbing up a tower in spring of 2015, and dozens of others, like this 18-year-old vlogger named Pasha, ecstatically train surfing just a couple of months later. Videos like these have been viewed more than 100 million times across the internet. And these exploits keep happening. One day in 2014, 16-year-old Justin Casqueo scaled One World Trade Center. A teenager accused of a bold act of trespassing. The alleged crime occurred more than 100 floors up in a New York City landmark. It's shocking and troubling, and uh, I don't know how it possibly could have happened. Months later, a white flag mysteriously appeared on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. You know, this is an iconic landmark, not only in this country, worldwide. This is a place where you think you would have the top security. Uh, bottom line, there was a security lapse. While these stunts are getting a lot of attention, they're not new. There is somebody out there in a tightrope walk between the two towers of the World Trade Center, right at the tippy top. That somebody was Philippe Petit, a 24-year-old Frenchman doing his higher wire act 1,350 feet up and no net below. It is uh, men wanting to climb, wanting to look at the world from a different perspective, wanting to fight gravity. Why did you do this? There is no why. It's just uh, because uh, um, when, when I see a beautiful place to put my wire, I, I cannot resist. Nearly two decades into the 21st century, with their cameras in hand and their millions of followers, urban outlaws are staking their claim across the world. Our mission? find out what the hell they're doing. To begin to understand these modern daredevils, we started with the man himself, high wire artist Philippe Petit. Or do you consider yourself an outlaw well, now? Yes, of course. I continue to be an outlaw in, in many uh, spiritual ways, yes, and yeah. sometimes in not so spiritual ways. Yeah. Philippe Petit's walk between the World Trade Center towers in 1974 is the subject of an acclaimed documentary and now a fiction film called The Walk. In, in the movie, you stood on the edge of oh, the Oh, yeah, World it's, Trade it's an amazing. By the way, that little piece of steel, it was a great idea. It was not there, but who cares? It's a great storytelling. <laughs> it shows that the building were in construction right. and that piece of steel at some point was taken away, the one on which the, the kid, I call him the kid, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Joe, who walks on. When you were cranking the cable, and yes. securing it, that was on the edge. Yes, I was on the very, very edge and I went down that crown dozens of times during that night, sometimes jumping, leaping like a monkey, which at some point we see in the film. We see Joseph getting on the very edge and jumping over. So I did that all night without looking and, you know, it was insane. Do you ever think about death? No, no, never, never. It's, never. Uh, it's almost the opposite, although the word death is pronounced by people who look at the wire walker often, but in my case, I have a life wish. Right. Not a... Not the other. Whatever that word is that we don't even use or, or, exactly. or know, know about. By contrast, victory or death is the motto of Vitaly and Vadim, the famed On the Roofs duo. They're just kids, but they still know all about Philippe Petit's walk across the Twin Towers. I shared with Petit images of some of today's most famous daredevils and urban explorers. Do you think yeah. that there's a parallel for, with the art that you've created? No, absolutely not. But there is a certain kinship with what I do in a sense that it's an expression of exploring, of freedom, of uh, daring for the rules and all that. You don't, do not hurt anybody by climbing a bridge or a tall tower and then, uh, you know, looking, looking at the landscape or even taking a picture of yourself. Passionate, resonant content is what we're talking about. I love the idea of exploring the forbidden and kind of getting, you know, uh, upending what we think of as as taboo, for example. I mean, that's like the greatest thing that digital media has probably done for a lot of folks. It was a little different for Philippe Petit. In 1974, how are you going to get people yeah. to experience your art craft? He waited until rush hour on a Tuesday. 
Yeah, it's brilliant, that spectacle, of, that is social media. I just love how they documented some of the reactions of people on the ground. This is a video done by these two Russian friends. They go around the world, they climb buildings, they go through tunnels, they dangle their legs over the edge of skyscrapers and uh, unfinished buildings all across the world. And they get millions of views, and they have an Instagram channel, and this is what they do, right? <laughs> God. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. Oh, oh I'm so dizzy. I, I'm serious. I'm like, I just want to be like, you boys, you're going to get hard up there. Oh my God. That actually made me dizzy. How would you define that experience? It's activating all these kind of like crazy primal responses in us when we're watching it. We're getting that adrenaline rush because of the way that they're shooting it with the, the fisheye lenses and you know it's giving you that kind of dizzying experience. We're able to put ourselves in those shoes, right? And and have this like totally thrilling experience without having to actually take the risk. 18-year-old photographer Hamza Deez burst onto the underground scene in 2014. With these photos from New York City, he quickly became an Instagram star. This is Dee's photo, and those are his dangling feet on the cover of New York Magazine. I try to capture things that most people don't see within their city to show them a new perspective, because I think humans, just people in general, love to see new things. Do you think anybody considers you to be something other than an artist? Yeah, people who don't, who don't appreciate art would see me as a vandal or a trespasser, just criminal. An outlaw, pretty much, yeah. For me, my camera turned out to be a tool that was a key that opened up many doors that someone like me would never even have access to or be able to see. I grew up in a ghetto. Being so, there's not that many, many options for people like me, and the camera just gave me so many options. Hamza, it turns out, was inspired by the Roofs guys, Vitali and Vadim. I was like scrolling through the internet, and I came across this one really cool video where two guys were just randomly climbing up this tower. And then like a light bulb went off in my head and I said, I haven't seen nobody shoot in New York and from this perspective. So I said, this is it. This is how I guess my work can be original. If Instagram didn't exist, would you be doing what you do for the love of climbing a bridge or a building or something? No, but I think that question is a question that will remain unanswered for the next couple of decades, you know, it's like if these things weren't accessible to us now, like where, like who would Beethoven be, you know, if the piano wasn't invented? How about the people who do think like you, the people who are on Instagram who are trying to go to great lengths to take pictures for the art of it? I would say the people that I've seen on Instagram doing similar things as me, I would say there's less than 10. But you don't consider yourself an urban explorer? No, not at all. Dees tells me there's a secret of a subculture of more than 100 urban explorers in New York City. Most of them aren't on social media, and most of them do it for the thrill. And you won't realize that until you join the urban explorer community. How does one join the urban explorer community? It's like the mafia, you gotta get invited in. I'm serious. The world of urban outlaws can be very dangerous. A couple of years ago, this German teenager was train surfing with his friends and ended up losing a leg. There are plenty of close calls, and even deaths. But for some pushing the boundaries, purpose trumps risk. New Yorker Steve Duncan came out of nowhere in 2009 with the viral video Undercity. Now he's a leader in the new wave of urban explorers. Steve Duncan photographs the water flows throughout the city to educate New Yorkers about how we get our water and where it goes. A lot of New Yorkers don't understand what happens when they flush the toilet or run the dishwasher. Where does that water go? That's an urban explorer who is on a mission. Duncan, who is now pursuing a PhD in urban geography, recently took me underground in New York City. Where we are right now has to do with keeping your basement from flooding. Right now, people pay attention to that sort of thing only when we have something like Hurricane Sandy. And then they say, oh my god, why isn't it working? It's really hard for most people to pay attention to parts of the city that are invisible. Yeah. And the most invisible parts of the city are the parts that are underground. And it's just, because it's invisible, it seems really mysterious and, and hard to understand. 
I do feel a sense of responsibility for it because I love it. I want to understand it and I want more people to understand it. Duncan showed me what he believes to be a natural spring built over during the last century that's now bursting through the existing storm drain. This is um, the spot where an old map from the end of the 19th century, right. mid 19th century through the end. It was about 1880s, that's the last time I see this water above ground. This is uh, shown as being a swampy area with natural springs. So when I came through this tunnel, and I found this water fountaining up. It took me a little bit to figure out, but I, I decided this is probably that old spring water forcing its way through. But I want to make sure of that, so I want to collect a sample of this water and try to test it and find out if it is city water supply water or natural aquifer water. Most of the time when we talk about it, we don't talk about it as cities being part of nature or vice versa. We talk about like either urban or nature. This is a case where it shows that, that no matter what, even in a city like New York, nature is still part of it. And we're better off if we, if we recognize that than if we ignore it. is dirty and wet, you know, and, uh, and full of life in a totally different way. And so then when you interact with it in that curious way, you experience it and it becomes a lot more exciting. I'll tell you something though that I think is really interesting about the Instagram kids and what they do. A lot of times it, it seems like what they're doing is different from what I'm doing because I, I'm a very much a nerdy grad school urban explorer. I approach stuff as urban historian. I don't think that uh, anybody can sustain a nerdy interest in the deeper meanings of things without having a love for those things, without being fascinated by those places and things. That's why I like what these Instagram kids are doing in, in a broad sense, because I think that if they're getting excited about places, excited about the urban environment, ultimately that's good for everybody who lives in an urban environment. To transfer their passion. Exactly, exactly. Begin with individual passion, transfer yeah. that passion to other people, and that passion took root and became a deeper thing. And what Philip Petit does, I think, and what the Instagrammer kids are doing, I think is all also part of the same thing, which is physically interacting with environments that could be boring without that physical interaction. There's a bunch of the younger urban explorers now who call me dad. I mean, not consistently, they make fun of me. Well, at least they don't call you grandpa. <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> I'm sure that's coming, like next year. <laughs> Keep voices down again. So what the hell are they doing? Some kids seek the thrill and the fame. For others, and for society, there's a lot more to it. In every era, there are artists who want to have us look at the world differently. You know, you look at Picasso and he wanted us to look at the human face, human body differently than we perceive it face to face. And so it translates to Philippe Petit wanting us to perceive buildings differently. And now Instagrammers or other urban explorers who want us to appreciate our city in different ways than we do already. Rather than looking at eye level at a building, we can maybe see it from the top. It's wonderful that such people are 
uh, got the inspiration from the man who walked in the sky and it, it's, it's a great compliment for, for me because basically that's what all my life I've been an advocate of. He says don't stay with your, I was going to say with your feet glued to the asphalt. <laughs> that's a, you know, a funny metaphor for a funambule but anyway, um, explore. We need to go in places that are either not made for us, you know, like another planet or a volcano uh, alive sure. or under the sea. And why not uh, digging tunnel or finding places that are mysterious and secret. So I am all excited about that. There's this interesting and fascinating quote that I read. It says, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. I always try to push myself each day to do something like at the peak of my comfort zone or out of my comfort zone so I can enjoy life, enjoy the moment. You know, just experience something new on a daily basis. Do you mind if I read a quote? No, from, read from a quote. I cannot kill the child in me. I cannot kill the child in me. I refuse. The spirit is true there. And you know what? I think that we adults, mostly we take ourselves too seriously. We should remember that we were kids, that we believed in fairy tales, that we played the game of trial and error, that we climbed trees, that we built tree houses, you know, I keep talking about the height, but anyway, it is true. It's very important, I think, in life, as you grow, to keep the innocence and maybe the, the naivete of the children. Yeah. Because it's very important. To